so good on, good morning everyone today we gonna solve this problem minimum operations to make element zero uh, yesterday also we got a similar name problem it was a medium problem don't worry it is not related to that problem and also if you are new to this channel make sure to hit the subscribe button because we make awesome dsa and cp content and also make very good content regarding placements and all so stay tuned for the further videos okay and also our vision is to make every hard question to medium to easy and yet again there is an example i make this video that this hard will become easy medium for you guys okay so let's see I, I i understand this problem is quite ambiguous at first first let's to decode the problem the problem itself i'm not able to understand what's trying to say sometime late code does it but okay we have to do that so what it says is we have given a 2d array queries a query i is a form of l to r each query defines an array of integer names consisting of elements ranging from l to r both inclusive see the it means is we have to to let's say this is a query this represents an array of like this form 234 let's say this is 226 then it would be 2346 so this is the question saying this is an array 2256 and then what is says in one operation what you can do you can pick two integers from this array itself this is the array and then you can replace this with the floor of a and floor of b what this floor means it's just a greatest integer division so let's say this is 4 then it would be 1 but it will be 3 then it would be zero right it would give a integer division that's all not a fancy term and generally lead code tells what is everything mathematical function but it's too obvious for lead code as well interesting and it says then determine the minimum number of operation required to reduce all the elements of the array to zero and it has the sum of the all result like what are the operation you require for all the queries sum it up okay all queries are independent so if we solve one query we just need to do the same thing for the other queries as well it's just all queries are independent so don't need to think about that okay by seeing this first intuition that what's come to your mind is the constraints okay constraints is very very important i hope you are getting it but the constraints are critical yes 10 power 9 range for li to ri that means you cannot iterate at least on the ranges even if it is 10 power 5 then also you cannot do that because 10 power 5 into 10 power 5 we won't make sense wouldn't be it would be 100 then you can do that but it's not okay cool that means we have to find some query solution in either in log n or constant time some pre computation can we do that we don't know but until now we are pretty sure either log n either constant either some pre computation we have to do that okay l to r means also this gives an hint maybe some constant or maybe some log n queries okay 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 before jumping to the intuition let's try to see the examples first okay so let's try to calculate how many operations we require so one say two this requires only one operations right pick one and two only two integers it becomes zero and zero for two to four it becomes two three four what are you going to do now see it's very important now the order also matters which integers do you pick first do you pick this two first or you pick like if you pick two first it would be like zero and let's say you pick three then uh, in a single operation zero four and then it required zero zero one and it requires zero 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 it requires three operations but can we do it better yes we can do it better pick three and four first two one or not zero and one and then what you pick zero 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 only two in two operations we did that okay so it's always fruitful that we find from here fruitful pick larger number first fruitful to pick larger number first so this reminds of something if you can understand top two elements max heap can do that yes you can do that but the complexity won't allow to do that you can pick two top two elements you can calculate the operations and then you can push it back again by putting the floor max heap won't work here if the constraint would have been lower this could have been you can iterate on all the numbers and you can do that but due to constraints we cannot do that so i am not explaining this further but i hope you got the gist of it similarly let's say 2 say 6 so this is 2 3 4 5 6 what are you going to do you pick the largest elements 
So you pick five and six first. So two, three, four. You can try out any other combination. It will lead to larger operations only. It will be one. It would be one. And then you pick c four, two, one. Ah, uh, sorry, zero, one, one, one. And then you pick zero, 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 one, one. And then it would be zero, 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 zero. Cool. We got in four operations. <clears throat> Now, okay. We got some idea of the problem. What we have to do. We understood the brute force solution itself. Now let's try to think about the optimal solution intuition first. Okay, I always comes with the intuition because without that I don't think so. The explaining of the problem won't will make sense. Cool. Look, okay. Do you observe one thing? Four power zero to four power one minus one. Hmm. What's the answer? Tell me. Tell me. Try to think. Is it one? Yes. Try to think. What's the answer for four power one to four power two minus one? Is it what? Is it two? Means let's see thirteen. What we do? We go to three. We go to zero. Only two operations required, making it to zero, right? So if we can see the pattern, four power, let's say two also four power three minus one required no operation of three and so on. Did you understand what I'm trying to say? We are dividing our ranges into these small small groups, small small subgroups. And then what we gonna do is we calculate the overlaps with our current range, and then we can calculate the operations needed. Okay. Now how long we have to do that? I hope also you got the gist here as well that we don't need to go too much further. If you do it two power seventeen to four power eighteen minus one, this will suffice. Why? Because two power thirty four is much much greater than ten power nine, so that will suffice. This is also fine. Means. Uh, we have to run a seventeen loop for each query. Okay, that makes sense. Seventeen loop for each query, and that would suffice because it's sort of log n query only. So we we turns and boils down our solution to a log n query. That's also fine. Cool. Till here, I think so. Did you get the intuition here that why I did that? We did because this will boils our solution to a very low complexity. We will find. Our intersection with our ranges. What I'm trying to say, let's say your range is 14 to 16. So what you gonna find the intersection with? Our intersection with this is 14, right? So my range is 1 to 3, then 4 to 15, and then 16 to 30, uh, 63, and so on. My ranges are like this. This formed in this range, and this lies in this range. So Answer for this each element in this range is two. Answer like the number of operation means is one. And what are we gonna do? We just sum it up. That's all. Yeah. That's what we will do. We just find the range in which our number lies. If they are group of them, they can directly compute in one go itself. If they are separate, we'll calculate it separate also. Let's say the range is like thirteen to sixteen. So thirteen to fourteen lies in this range. And uh, fifteen to sixteen lies in this range. Oh, sorry, sorry, thirteen to fifteen lies in the, uh, that range, and sixteen to sixteen lies in this range. Okay, so this is how we gonna divide our ranges into these overlapping small sub ranges, and then we can can find our solution using these. We already know that, right? How many operations require for that? Okay. So try to implement the solution by yourself. Obviously, I will gonna show you the solution. But yeah, from there at least I think you should able to try the thing. Then come back to the video the how I implement it. the implementation is slightly tricky as well. So yeah, try to do it with your own and then I will explain as well. Okay, cool. So what we are gonna do? Let's try to understand. We finally store our answer in our answer variable. See one more trick I want to share with you guys all that if you want since we here long long is required and your uh, assuming two power thirty four is going also uh, uh, above the range of integer right so you can do long long as hash define ll long long this is a very good thing because you have to write long long again and again it's very frustrating at least in inter uh, interviews and it's in contests as well okay so yeah this is a good tip so what you're gonna do is You define your start and end of your ranges, which we have given in the queries. This operations I will explain you in a bit. 
that what is operation is doing basically it's calculating the number of operation required in a particular query but why we that need that we'll see also one more important thing we are calculating one by one like, let's say uh, in the original question it says two integer you can pick at a time but here i am picking one one only at a time what we will do we will divide by two okay at the end what is this this is prev and this is curl like it's we are going like this four then uh, four and then sixteen and sixty four eight. So we are firstly prev is here, cur is here, prev and cur is here, and we are mo moving the prev and then cur. Okay, we'll see why we are moving that as well because of the ranges we want it. Now let's try to understand. This is a pruning condition. We'll see that uh, later. Firstly, try to understand this. Okay, we have initialized prev and cur with one, and we already made cur ahead of per prev. Now let's try to one. Now see. Also, this is another trick. See, this is this problem is a combination of standard other problems. Okay, other standard problems. Okay, now do you know to find an intersection between two sets, uh, two intervals? One way is to check all the four cases. Okay, this is the case. Maybe this is the side the interval. Maybe this is the overlap. There are too many cases to cover. One very beautiful way is cover is take the max of the left ranges. Take the min of the right ranges and take the min. Take the uh take now what you have to do now now check r is greater than equals to l or now the right part should be the this is the right part and this is the left part. If r is greater than equals to l, that means this is a valid overlap. How? Let's try to see. Let, let's see this example. This is an overlap, right? Now this minimum of this is what is what is the maximum? This is the maximum, okay. And what is the minimum of right ranges? This there is an overlap, right? But let's say you are here and let's say you are here. So is there an overlap? No. But what is the maximum? This is the maximum. What is the minimum of right range? This is the minimum. Is this is left? This is right. Is right is greater than left? No. There is no overlap. This is how you can by trick you can calculate the overlap and how many elements in the overlap? R minus L plus one. Now, for this, what we are doing is we are running a cost. What is this cost? Uh, this four power zero we have maintained, right? How many? Huh, this one, two, three. How many operations needed? That's we are calculated here. Cost running from one to seventeen. Uh, you can tell run till sixteen as well because this will still lies in the valid range. Now, what we are doing is this multiplying with the number of elements here. Also, I've showed you, right? Let's say thirteen to fourteen. 13 to 15 lies in one range. These will contribute one. This will contribute another, but with another cost. And now what we are going to do is we are moving prev to cur, moving the cur to the next and the prev to the cur. Cool. Why we are doing operations by plus one by two, not by operations by two? So let's suppose the total operations comes out to be five. So we cannot pick five by two, which is two. No, we have to pick three operations, means five plus one by two, six by two. Why? Because obviously you understood, right? Let's say some elements become zero. Let's say uh, there are five elements, five operations needed, and some of them remaining zero, but still there one is there, right? So we have to make it zero, right? We cannot uh, five by two uh, won't work. So have to make zero. Eventually picking another zero, so it would be three operations. So this is also an edge case. We have to keep care of this also, and. What we are about doing, we are just pruning it. We are not running a 17 loop every time. So to increase the better time, the complexity in an interview, it's a very good thing. Prev is greater than end. Obviously, then you cannot find an overlap because it's already surpasses the left range, already surpasses the right range. That means we are doing a break. I'll also show you with the help of a small example that let's say the same example I'm trying to say. Let's say uh, it's 13 to 16. <clears throat> so what we are going to do? See, initial ranges will gonna be ignored. 4 power 0, 4 power 1 minus 1. See, our left is what? In this case, maximum of this comma our prev. What is our prev? Prev is this. So L is 13. What's our R? R is this. Minimum of this and this. So would be 3. Is this a valid overlap? No. We move forward. 4 power 1 to 4 power 2 minus 1, which is 15. Okay, so is there a valid overlap? Let's try to see what is left again. Max of this, this is prev, 
and this again 13 what is our min of this and this oh yeah this is an overlap now because 15 minus 13 plus 1 so basically there are three elements and we're multiplying with the cost now the cost is not 1 the cost is 2 so it's gonna be 6 cool and now for 16 also again we move to the next 4 power 2 to 4 power 3 minus 1 what gonna be L L gonna be maximum of this and this the L gonna be 16 what's gonna be R minimum of 16 comma 63 which is again gonna be 16 and we're gonna be 1 into 3 which is 3 and the total operations required for this complete transformation is 9 and then what are you gonna do you're gonna be plus 1 by 2 which is gonna be 5 and similarly if you have other ranges do the same procedure and just repeat and just add it up. So I hope you understood the intuition, you understood the solution that it's not a hard problem. It's just a mere thinking and implementation problem. But yeah, this is a very good math problem. You should uh, understand this. And if you understood it, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe the channel because I will be making such mo more such awesome content. We are also uh, uploading continuously our OA series to help you guys with the placement. And yeah, we have more content available on the channel as well. So do check it out and do let us know that feedback and stay tuned for the further videos. Bye-bye.